Good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. I'm hoping that you can hear me. That would be grand. Let's see. I am not sure. If there's anyone on, please give me a heads up that you can hear me at this time. I'm going to go ahead and increase my volume. Let's see. I think that's good. Okay, folks, here I am. Hello, Natasha. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay, please. That would be helpful. Betty, Betty, helpful. All right. Monica Corrado here, the Gaps Chef. It is, what day is it? It is the 2nd of April. How did that happen? Who knows? So, Monica Corrado here, the Gaps Chef. Good to be here with you, trying out this new time. We will be here at 12.15 p.m., on Tuesdays mountain time and it is really wonderful to be here with you okay hey Leonie can you hear me just give me a thumbs up perfect I hope that was a thumbs up hello Natasha hello Zuzana hello Cindy hello everyone good to have you with me here today hello Claude Yahoo good thank you <laughs> you never know I could be talking into oblivion so, all right, so just a couple things, folks. As you all know, if you've been with me before, you know that I am not a medical doctor. I am a certified GAPS practitioner. I am on Dr. Natasha's teaching team. I help to train the certified GAPS practitioners and certified GAPS coaches in um, cooking for GAPS. So um, what else can I tell you? I'm a teaching chef. And I love to do these Facebook Lives and Facebook Lives and answer your questions. So if you're new to the group or you're new to the Lives, welcome, welcome, welcome. You will see um, um, that there are several things on the page just for you. Please do check out Featured Posts. That's a place where I put some very, uh, I think, important information to help you get through gaps. Um, help you know what it is, how it works, etc. Um, the biggest one there, I think, is the video that I did that's called The Four Pillars. It tells you all about what GAPS is and how it works, and hopefully that's helpful to you. Hello, Cassie. So, welcome to everyone that's here. Uh, people that are jumping on and people that I can't see, welcome, welcome. People that will see this later on. My desire in these Tuesday uh, Facebook Lives, um, or my intention, is to accurately represent the GAPS diet uh, as I know it from Dr. Natasha, um, and also answer your questions to be available as a certified GAPS practitioner, to be available to you once a week, um, as often as I can. I try to do it every week unless family things get in the way, etc., etc. So today I thought we would start with the topic of kamikaze or practicing. Hmm, what does that mean? Kamikaze gaps, I'm putting it in quotes. Uh, that's a term that I thought of when working with a client uh, or clients over the last couple of months. Um, it's a uh, phrase that I coined, uh, kamikaze gaps. Uh, or a kamikaze gapster is someone who dives right in without any preparation, without any anything. They, they don't even read the book. Um, I really encourage you to read one of the books, yellow or blue, and also to really access Dr. Natasha's, um, her own webpage, gaps.me. She has a lot of information about what the diet is, how it works, um, where to find a certified GAPS practitioner, where to find a certified GAPS coach, um, all sorts of answers to all sorts of questions. Just really, I encourage you to jump there. All right, so please do read something before you start. So a kamikaze GAPster, this is my term. It just means someone who jumps right into GAPS, who, um, who hasn't done any preparation um, in terms of learning how to make meat stock or learning how to make uh, ferments or sourcing clean meat or sourcing clean eggs 
or, or sourcing raw milk or learning how to culture dairy, right? So I guess there's actually different stages of kamikaze. One of them is the person who really, as I said, either doesn't read the book, really bad idea, um, or doesn't do these things, right? They don't learn how to make meat stock before they start intro. They don't learn how to make ferments. They don't make any meat stock. They don't make any ferments. They don't do any preparation. That's one type of kamikaze yapster. They, do, they jump into the diet and they don't know what they're doing. They're flailing about. They're asking a million questions on every Facebook forum they can find. They're getting very different answers on every Facebook forum they can find because the majority, uh, well, I'll just say that there's some mm, not really accurate information out on some of those places. Um, so in any case, and they really are having a hard time of it. I don't suggest starting gaps that way, folks. I, I really don't. The second kamikaze gapster is someone who actually, maybe they've been on full gaps for a long time. Uh, so they know how to make meat stock. They know how to make ferments. They know how to culture their dairy, meaning they know it's a long culture. It's lactose free. It's homemade, all sorts of things. Um, but but they're still eating a lot of nuts and a lot of seeds and a lot of fruit because of course nuts and seeds and fruit are all on the full gaps diet i mean they're there doesn't that mean you should be able to eat them maybe maybe not we remember i hope we remember that nuts seeds fruit feed yeast and so if you're hanging out on full gaps, and maybe you've been there for six months, maybe you've been there for two years, but you really have a high percentage of fruit and nuts in your diet, whether the nuts and seeds are prepared correctly or not, I hope they are soaked or sprouted or fermented. Um, yeah, if you're hanging out on full, uh, and, which is great, I love it. That means at least the food is clean and you know the techniques but perhaps you are eating maybe four or five pieces of fruit a day. Maybe you're having two bananas a day. Ah, way too much fruit, folks. Maybe you're having like, you know, you know, almond flour made fermented, mm, ferment, fermented nut flour muffins and breads and cookies and, you know, every other darn thing. So. If you jump from full gaps having that much fruit and sugar in your diet, if you jump from full into intro, that is also a kamikaze move as far as I'm concerned. Why does that, what does that mean? Again, um, you're jumping in without preparation. If you go from a full gaps diet like that straight into intro stage one, you will crash and burn. It won't be pretty. You will experience a lot of die off and die off is not happiness. Um, die off can look like vomiting. Die off can look like diarrhea. Die off can look like migraine headaches. Die off can look like um, lethargy and flu like symptoms and sore throats, all sorts of things die off can look like. So. I'm just really encouraging you folks. I really encourage you. Again, entirely up to you the way that you um, approach your GAPS journey. But if you want it to be as smooth as it can be, then you're going to do some preparation ahead of time. So if you are just out there, obviously you're so if you're on this, uh, in this group, you already have experience with gaps. You've already read the book. Hooray. Good job. Um, you're, you've already, um, experienced healing. We do hope, you know, how to make meat stock and all things like that. But, um, hopefully you'll want, if you're moving, if you're doing intro, you'll want to do these things. I think for the easiest gaps journey, for the easiest gaps experience. And of course it's all relative and connected with you, your health, 
what you were eating before you started GAPS, um, what kind of symptoms you have, are they chronic, have they been around for a long time, how many do you have, right? Like how well are you when you actually start the GAPS diet? So if you want to have the easiest GAPS journey, I believe, that you can have, you will want to do what we call practicing GAPS. Practice it before you move to stage one. Hello, Monica. <laughs> Good to see you. Hello, Yuliani. Hello, Rebecca. Welcome to everyone. All right, so you will want to practice. You will want to learn how to make meat stock and bring it into your diet slowly. You'll want to learn how to make ferments, meaning fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and vegetable medley, which is made with kefir whey and beet kvass. You'll want to learn how to do these things and slowly bring them into your diet. You will want to learn how to make cultured dairy, make long cultured yogurt, long cultured, uh, cultured cream, right? Long cultured kefir or kefir. Yeah, you'll want to learn all of these things before you go to stage one. Because stage one can really, <laughs> I'll say knock your socks off. That's a nice way to put it. I was going to say something not so nice, but certainly send you flying. Um, stage one can be really tough if you don't already know how to do these things. Yeah, so I'm always encouraging anyone that I work with, anyone that I'm teaching, any one of my clients, um, anyone at all, I'm encouraging you to learn the cooking techniques, to bring them into your diet slowly before you go and jump to stage one. Because the intro diet is a tough diet. And um, I do believe that many people start intro without doing the prep and, um, and that really, you know, we want to set you up for success. Yeah? They don't do the prep and then they crash and burn. And then gaps is too hard. And then they feel terrible. And then, and then, and then, right? So do yourself a favor or anyone that you know that's either on gaps or wanting to move from full to intro or um, someone new that wants to try it at all. Start working on just making meat stock and bring it into your diet slowly. Start working on learning to ferment and putting up several quarts of sauerkraut, several quarts of beet kvass, several quarts of vegetable medley um, before you even get into this very, very, very focused, specific step-by-step uh, process of the six stages of the intro diet. You can freeze quarts of meat stock. You can freeze quarts of blended vegetable soups, which is all stage one. You can freeze quarts of hearty soups with the meat and the vegetables in it, right? You can do all of that prior to getting started. And of course, there's always hmm, I, I don't have a pot big enough or I don't have a Dutch oven. How can I do this? Of course, you can do it. You don't have to own a Dutch oven. I just prefer them because they help you constrain water. But right, equipment too. So I just wanted to just bring up the subject today of kamikaze gapster, which just means someone who dives right in without any prep. If you're going to dive right in without any prep, you will crash and burn. And it won't feel good to your body. It won't be a nice, smooth move into gaps, right? So that's my um, not humble suggestion for today. After working with all of the clients that I work with and teaching, et cetera, et cetera, I think it's just a really good idea. Um, I know that Americans, and I am an American, but you know, I don't know about the rest of the cultures around the world, but in this culture, we're all about just dive right in. Boom. I'm going to do it. I'm ready now. 
right? And we do things. We'll, <laughs> we go blundering in like a bull in a china shop. I've got lots of analogies going on today, folks, right? We just blunder about. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I haven't read the book, but I'm ready. Mm. Take a moment. Do some prep. Set yourself up for success. Set your body up for ease. And also, it's always a good idea if you're going to do intro to put some time aside to do it. Like literally, at least stage one, you should be home. Do not try to work on stage one. You should be home. You know, again, three to five days, two to five days, stage one. Do it over a long weekend. Give, your, give yourself the time, the space to rest, to hang around on the couch if you need to, to read a good book, to take a nap, to sit in some detox, detox baths. Make it easy for yourself. A lot of people like to do intro over a holiday, over meaning a summer holiday or a spring holiday where you have, or even a, um, a winter holiday over the Christmas holidays or et cetera, right? So, um, so that you have a chunk of time for you to just be at ease with your body and allow it to heal and allow it to detox and give yourself the time to really support yourself to listen. What is my body saying? Oh, I really want to go to sleep. Go take a nap. Oh, I really have aches in my joints and pains. Go rest on the couch, right? Put yourself in a detox bath, all sorts of things like that. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up today. I'm, I'm working with some folks and I'm always going to suggest that you set yourself up for success. All right, and ease. All right, I'll take some questions now. I hope that was helpful. Let's see who's come on since I said hello. <laughs> Monica, knock your socks off means it's going to be extreme. It's going to be like, whoa, right? It's going to be a lot. It's going to be intense. It's just a, <laughs> just a silly uh, saying that means it's going to be intense. It's going to knock your socks off, meaning, ah, that was too much. It was too strong. It was too intense, etc. It's not easy. Okay, Rebecca, hello, Monica. Thank you for these videos and for Facebook. You're welcome, your Facebook page. I'm glad it's helpful. I'll keep doing it until it's helpful, folks. I mean, until it stops being helpful or as long as it's helpful. Yeah. Hey, Zainab is here. Woohoo! All right, Mary is here. Hello, Mary. Okay. Okay, put your question in. I'm glad you like my analogies, Monica in my favorite country over the pond. Yeah. Okay. Hope you're having a beautiful day. <laughs> All right. Mm, let's see what we've got in terms of question. Zah. All right. I have a question from Zainab. Let's see. How terrible is it to do intro when nursing? Baby is eating but seven months old and still nursing every four hours. Mm. Yeah, I would go right back, everybody. So if you want information about doing intro while nursing, while pregnant, any of those things, you go to the yellow book. The yellow book, I'm always going to say, people, you go to the yellow book and Dr. Natasha will go right into detoxification, no, 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 good in the bad, ba, ba, ba. Let me find it, I'm sorry, I think it's in the back. It has to do with baby gaps. Oh, look at that. Having a new baby in the gaps family. Yay. So go there and see what Dr. Natasha has to say. I'm always going to be sending people back to the books. Uh, that is page 345. I would also go, folks, if you are interested, a fabulous, amazing practitioner uh, colleague of mine, Holly Bingham, has put together baby gaps uh, class with Dr. Natasha, folks. It is an excellent, excellent uh, class that you can uh, take a look at. Dr. Natasha wrote a little Baby Gaps book. It is the official Baby Gaps program. Uh, nothing else that has been published by anyone else is official to the Gaps diet. So um, check that out on gapstraining.com. 
You can look at courses or classes. I think it's called DIY. My Meat Stock Master Class is also there. So, um, yeah, the short, the short thing is that you should not be doing intro when you're nursing a baby every four hours. Yeah. Okie doke, smoke. Let's see. Rebecca asks, how long do you slowly increase something before moving to the next thing to add? Great question. For example, ah, transitioning from no plants gaps to intro using instructions from the blue book. Excellent. We are slowly introducing sauerkraut, starting with one teaspoon in a quart and gradually increasing. But it also says, once tolerated, slowly introduce roasted garlic. At what point do we say we've added enough sauerkraut? Ah, to then start adding roasted garlic. Great question. Um, hmm. So let's go back to why... Mm, mm. Let's go back to the challenge in moving from no plant to uh, intro. Yeah, so no plant to intro. The challenge is fiber. So you were on no plant because plants were giving you cramps. Uh, cramps were, sh uh, plants were giving you cramps, sorry. <laughs> plants were giving you cramps and plants maybe were showing up in your stool Plants were showing up, giving you diarrhea. So um, introducing plants, it's always best. Yeah, you can introduce sauerkraut. As long as you are not cramping with sauerkraut and you are not um, having any um, diarrhea from the sauerkraut, from adding in the plant fiber, you should be fine. Um, I would be thinking you should be able to have, hmm, I don't know maybe three or four forkfuls a day um, without any symptoms <clears throat> of sauerkraut before you start bringing in roasted garlic. Yeah, that's what we're really looking for, folks. Remember, we take out the plants because plants can give you diarrhea, because plants can make you cramp, because plants can work like um, sandpaper on an open wound. Remember, I use that analogy a lot. Scraping, fiber, injury, and so as long as none of that is happening when you're bringing in plants and of course fermented plants, meaning sauerkraut is the best to bring in because a ferment means that um, the cellulose, the plant fiber has been broken down by the fabulous microbes. I hope that's helpful. I'd say three or four forkfuls of sauerkraut before you start introducing another thing. Yes. All right. <clears throat> it's for my two-year-old, formerly SIBO, so a little tough to tell on cramps. Yeah. So Rebecca, just go ahead and make sure he can do three or four ta uh, forkfuls and then go ahead and add the next thing in. That's probably good. Um, also watch his stools, right? We're always watching the bowels and the stools. So um, another thing that's interesting to watch when we're not able to digest plants is bloating. So watch his tummy for bloating. That means he's having a hard time uh, bringing in the sauerkraut. Watch his stools. Make sure he's not getting diarrhea because of the sauerkraut, because of the fiber in the sauerkraut. And then also watch to see if there's any of the plant fiber in his stools. That's how you check. You're welcome. Excellent. All right, let's see what we've got next. We've got Lenny. How are you? I'm still digesting my trauma. I hear you. I hear you, girl. I hear you. <clears throat> I just want to say a quick thing for everyone. Anyone who has any trauma, all of us have, all of us. Trauma could be emotional, trauma could be physical, like I had a car accident. Trauma could be physical. I had an operation. Trauma could be physical. I was, um, I, my mom had a hard labor with me. <clears throat> trauma could be emotional, like, ah, I just heard someone died. I mean, all sorts of trauma. Or I just lived through, you know, taking my family member through hospice. I mean, everybody's got trauma, folks. So it's really important for all of us to acknowledge that to give ourselves some grace, 
to bless ourselves, right? Like to be really easy and listen to the body. I know that you know that uh, I love Star of Bethlehem as a Bach flower remedy to help re um, to help dissolve any trauma, physical, emotional, mental, etc. Star of Bethlehem is a Bach flower remedy, and I did a couple of um, videos, I believe, on trauma that are available on YouTube. Ask the Gap Chef trauma. Okay. So I have a cool thing for you all with trauma that I haven't talked about much. One is to work with a um, somatic, somatic practitioner to help somatic therapy to help move trauma out of the body. I'd love for you all to look at um, alchemical alignment, alchemicalalignment.com. Find some fabulous practitioners there, really highly trained to help trauma move out of the body. Yeah. And the last one is to look at tuning forks. I would look at biofield healing with Eileen McCusick. I think that's how you say it. Biofieldhealing.com. Lots of free stuff out there, folks, that you could just do and feel better. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. My histamine reactions got worse and my diet even more limited. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. How long does it take to get through the digest trauma stage and anything I could do to improve my gut reactions in the interim? My histamine reactions got worse. Okay, so histamine, we all know I've talked on histamine before, but I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically here for this question. Hmm. I am betting, since you said that your diet even got more limited, that means you're taking out things that you're having strong histamine responses to, and that's probably a good idea for a while until we get more healing and sealing. There's a couple things for histamine. One is, of course, histaminum is a homeopathic. I am not a homeopath. I'm not trained, but we have a couple of fabulous uh, homeopaths on our page who can talk about histaminum, which is a homeopathic remedy. I don't know if you've worked with that. The other thing is, I don't know if you, somehow I think you're not in the U.S., Ian, Ian, I'm not sure, but if you're in the U.S., you can get standard process Antronex. Antronex is the best thing I know to help the liver clear histamine. So let me know, hmm, I should write that down for people. Antronex, hold on. La 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 la, Antronex. Standard process, Antronex. Mm, the other thing is, I'm going to say something that's probably going to be a little bit, mm, you know me, I kind of live on the edge. A little bit, I don't know. It's going to shake people up. <laughs> but, um, you may want to look at your stomach acid and you may also, yeah, you might want to look at your stomach acid and you may also want to look at your pH, meaning, um, yeah, just make sure your stomach acid is high enough. Antronex, A-N-T-R-O-N-E-X. It is actually um, beef liver fat. That's what Antronex is. It helps to decongest, um, mm, better word, dilate, uh, Nah, we'll do decongest. Decongest the liver and the hepatic vein so that uh, the bile can flow and also so that the histamine clears the body faster. That is not a GAPS supplement. It is a Monica supplement, something that I use with my clients. It's an excellent, excellent um, histamine clearer. All right, let's see. Uh... Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. UK. Yeah, I don't think that you can find Antronex. They will not ship. Uh, but I would look at those two things. Oh, no, Star of Bethlehem. Don't be scared. It will never do too much for you. Star of Bethlehem, you can carry it around in your pocket. Start there. You, you could carry it around in your pocket. You could sleep with it under your pillow. You could... Um, 
put two drops in a quart of water and sip on it all day, just gently, gently, gently with the Star of Bethlehem. You don't have to be concerned. It, my experience and my understanding is that um, flower remedies will not do more than you are calibrated for. So it will meet you exactly where you are and then it will help you exactly correctly. So don't worry about that. Good, 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 good. Hello, Marion is here. Hello, Marion. Good to have you. All right. Monica Nava wants to know about Holly. Holly, tell me more. You mean Holly, the Bach flower remedy? Or give me more. I'm not sure. All right. Mary says, it's the alcohol in it I'm scared of. Oh, then don't take it orally. No problem. How about you do two drops on your head? Bing, bing. How about you do two drops on your liver? Bing, bing. Those are, those are drops. Bing, bing. <laughs> how about you do, um, how about you pour it into a shot glass or a little glass, put some boiling water over it, let the alcohol um, dis uh, dissolve or whatever, disperse, uh, be burned off, and then put it in your water. How about you put it in your bathtub? Don't worry about taking it orally if you don't want to. Put it on your body or in your bath or, um, yeah, on your body, in your bath. You never have to put a flower remedy, take it orally. Just fine. All right. Da, 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 da. All right, so let's do this. Mary asks, we went to stage two for a couple of days and then Easter came and she had pecans and cashews and egg whites. The next day she had a lot of welts on her right arm. We have been battling welts since we went back in stages. January finally got them minimized three or four days ago, and then Easter happened. Okay, so Mary, go back to stage one. I would go back to stage one, uh, maybe two days with your uh, little person. I think it's your daughter, maybe. Mm, looking at, looking at welts. I don't know who it is. Okay. Um, I would go back to stage one. I would do two days on stage one, maybe three, of just meat stock and blended vegetable soups with lots of good fat and lots of good salt. Um, and whatever probiotics you're on in stage two, do not decrease the level of probiotics that you got to in stage two. And then go back to stage two. And then let's see what happens. Um, welts on her arms, yeah. So the skin is a major detox organ. You know, the body is detoxifying. Um, I also would drop all the pecans and all the cashews. Just get rid of them. Folks, this is the word according to Monica, but really Dr. Natasha says the same thing. Nuts and fruit feed yeast. Get them out. And of course, we know that there are no nuts uh, on stage two. They don't show up until nut butter on stage three, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I would do that. I would do lots of detox baths with your little person. Um, I would look to see which one works best for the welts. It may be that the baking soda bath, bicarbonate of soda bath is better for the welts. Um, and of course, we just always support the organs of detoxification. Yeah, we take detox baths, we do castor oil packs or a little bit of castor oil on her liver, maybe. We um, go out in the sunshine. We walk around barefoot on the earth. Yeah, all of those good things. We drink green juices if we need to, but she's only on stage one and two, so probably not. Um, yeah, I would do that. You can also try things for the skin, folks. Um, you could try topically a bicarbonate of soda paste with a little bit of water, put it on at night, try it on one welt. I wouldn't put it all over this person, all over your daughter, but right. Or you could put um, cod liver oil, fermented cod liver oil on the skin. It's a fabulous thing. See how that works. They disappear in a, few, in a day or two. Hmm. Yeah, that just means, yeah, I gotta tell you folks, I'm trying to be sweet, but you know, I'm a little bit bratty because I am a Jersey girl 
an East Coast girl born of New Yorkers who's got a strong, you know, Italian background. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit straight with you. Full gaps. There are some major challenges on the full gaps diet, folks. Major challenges. In fact, I did a video on um, on full gaps, uh, on the challenges of full gaps um, a little while ago. So you could check that out on my Ask the Gap Chef YouTube. All right? Look, there's probably 50. I don't know. There's a lot of fabulous. Um, I don't know. I call them fabulous. The fabulous topics. Whether I was fabulous or not is another question, right? But there are some really good topics that I've covered. I hope they're helpful to you. Um, so I would look at the challenges of the full gaps diet that I did. It's very helpful, I think. I hope it'll be helpful. Um, but I would really take out all of those um, nuts and seeds and fruits. Full gaps, yeah. Go back to intro. Do intro stage one for three days and then jump to stage two, hang out there for maybe, mm, I would hang out on stage two for probably three months with your daughter and see how the microbial balance shifts. Let's see how her microbes shift. Let's see how her welts uh, go down and let's really up the amount of kefir she's drinking. I don't know if she's drinking any yet, but definitely do kefir. Okay. Hello, Leslie. Good to have you. Cassie has a question. Hello, Monica. Hello. Do you have a video explaining food sensitivities on dairy, eggs, gluten, and nuts? I'm curious how you introduce each of these sensitivities on gaps, including full gaps. Mm. Cassie, it's a great question. So, There is no gluten on the GAPS diet, so let's just throw that out because we're not going to introduce it. Um, we can start looking at gluten after we've been on GAPS for at least two years and all of our symptoms are gone. So that's that. In terms of food sensitivities on dairy, eggs, and nuts, um, I don't know that I have a, but that's a great, maybe we'll do that next week. How about that? We could do that next week on the on the Facebook Live. The the reality is like the short answer is that the short answer is that gaps will in the majority of cases in the majority of people heal the reason why you have those sensitivities. That's why GAPS exists. That's one of its greatest, I mean, that is the gift of GAPS. I mean, there's a million gifts of GAPS, but um, certainly one of the biggest ones is that when you heal and seal the gut with meat stock, you, um, your sensitivities go away. The reason you have the sensitivities is because you have a leaky gut, right? The reason we have sensitivities to these foods is that we have a leaky gut where our, our um, GI tract, our small intestine has uh, holes in it. I mean, you're not whole like you're dying. Well, yeah, you are dying. Oops, sorry. We're all dying. Sorry. <laughs> um, but your GI tract is, uh, let's just say it this way. You have increased intestinal permeability. You have what's called a leaky gut. And so molecules that are not supposed to get into the bloodstream are getting into the bloodstream and you, your body's reacting. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, it's saying, hey, we got a problem. A food sensitivity is saying, hey, we got a problem. We have a leaky gut here. Somebody pay attention because if we don't pay attention, you're going to have more sensitivities. Now you're going to be sensitive to this and that and 137 million other things. So that's an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and heal and seal the gut. And um, when we do that, then the sensitivities go away. Yay. Oh, wow. Look at that. I'm doing something cool. I like this. Where did that come from? I don't know, <laughs> but that was fun. I should do it again. Um, I really suggest that everyone who's on my little page and everyone that's on Facebook trying to do gaps, goes and looks at my video called um, Gaps Basics, The Four Pillars. The Four Pillars, because the four pillars will explain to you, Cassie and everyone, 
what GAPS is and how it works, right? So that would be helpful. And also you have sensitivities. Those are my, those are not bunny ears. Those are my quotes. You have sensitivities to dairy. Um, those are usually lactose problems. So once you start using, eating, making homemade, and then eating um, lactose-free dairy, you don't have a problem. So, yeah. So in any case, um, again, I'm not talking about anaphylaxis here, although we have had many, many, many people resolve anaphylactic allergies after doing the GAPS diet, but we don't ever try to introduce foods that you have an anaphylactic reality, uh, anaphylactic allergy to. We don't try to introduce them on GAPS. But yeah, um, do GAPS and then we'll try to introduce these foods, um, the ones that you have sensitivities to. And also if you have quote unquote dairy sensitivities, the dairy introduction structure folks, mm, let's talk about that for a moment. So the first thing you do if you have problems is uh, with dairy or have um, difficulties with dairy is that you will um, take all commercial dairy out of your diet for four to six weeks. Nothing from the store because you have to clear out the toxins from commercial dairy and then do the dairy introduction structure, which is outlined in the yellow book, outlined in the blue book, outlined in my, outlined in my book, etc. Okay, unless you have already done a Facebook Live on severe bloating and cramping. Of course, I'm happy to do that, Monica. My, my name friend. <laughs> okay, bloating and cramping. I'll do it. I've got that. All right, we want to do one on introducing foods. Introducing sensitive foods. Foods. Yep. Yep, yep. Good, good. Good, good, good. I will do it. Okay. I'd like to ba -ba -ba -ba. Yes. I'm what you call a jump right in person. Oh, you are, eh? I'm glad. Maybe this video was for you. Who knows? Maybe that topic came up for you specifically, Cassie. You brought it in. Grazie. You're welcome. Okay. Gina says, after 3.5 years on GAPS, I might be experiencing return of dairy sensitivity and histamine intolerance. Excellent. Did I say that? Yes because that means you are spiraling up. That means healing is happening. That means that you are peeling away another layer. So yes, great idea. Take it out six weeks. I am wondering if it's worth incorporating coconut kefir for yeast support. You know, it may be really good. I would try doing vegetable medley for yeast support, right? See if that works, Gina. That would be great. Good for you. All right, everyone. You're welcome, Cassie. You're welcome, Monica. I hope you're well, Monica. It's been a while. Hope you're doing well over there in my favorite country in Europe. All right. Okay, everyone. Blessings to all of you. I will see you here next week. Same gaps time. It's new. 1215 Mountain, uh, which would be, of course, 215 Eastern, etc. Beet kvass too. Beet kvass is made with lactobacilli. You can bring in beet kvass, but you make it with something else. Of course you are. We all are working on ourselves. We are all working on ourselves. And if we're not, we might as well be dead. I'm a little bit strong today, aren't I? I'm a little bit perky. That's because I, um, I got to the East Coast to see my family. Uh, yes. Last week, so much fun. Good old New York City. Hello, Sabrina. All right, everyone, be, I know, I know, funny, right? I got to go to um, Greenwich Village in New York, which is where my beloved Italian family lived when they first came over on the boat. All right, all right, blessings to everyone. Have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and whatever you do, keep breathing, meaning big breaths. Calm down that system by big breaths before eating, right? Three big breaths. 
Everyone commit to taking three big breaths before you take that first bite of food. Yeah? In and out. Yes. All right. Take good care, everyone. We'll see you next week, and we'll do these topics. Okay. Be well. Bye-bye.